In my hometown of Utrecht, there was a bakery in the center of town that sold what I considered as a kid to be magical bread. It was bread filled with pearl sugar, cinnamon and ginger syrup. It was called suikerbrood, translated sugar bread. And I remember when my friend's mom introduced me to it. She took us to the bakery, which also had a small cafe. We had some hot cocoa and a slice of this bread. Every time since, when I would go downtown with my parents, I would nag my mom to let me buy some of that delicious bread. When I moved to the United States, I couldn't find it. It is not something that exists here. As a true engineer, I researched it and developed a recipe that tastes just like I remember it as a kid. I hope you like it as much as I do. Hi, I'm Tuan and welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking food from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies, such as Indonesia. Today, we're making Fries Suikerbrood, literally translated Frisian sugar bread. It is this delicious bread with pearl sugar, cinnamon and ginger syrup baked through it. And traditionally in Friesland, this would be a gift to a new mom who had given birth to a baby girl. A baby boy, for some reason, gets a different kind of pastry, and that is a currant bread. But today, we're making suikerbrood. You will need the following ingredients. 700 grams of all-purpose flour, 300 milliliters of milk, 14 grams or two packets of yeast, 14 grams or two teaspoons of salt, 20 grams of granulated sugar, 300 grams of pearl sugar, two whole eggs, 40 grams of butter, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and six tablespoons of ginger syrup. I heated up the milk to approximately 110 degrees. So let's take a look where we're at. 110, 112, that's fine. So let's add the sugar first, which is really going to feed the yeast. Mix it through and now add the yeast and mix that through as well until it's all combined. This has to stand for 10 minutes. You'll know when it's ready because it will have a big layer of foam on top. So while that is standing, I'm gonna get the mixer and get ready to make the dough. It has been 10 minutes and as you can see, the milk sugar yeast mixture has a big layer of foam on top. So that is fantastic. First thing we have to do is I whisk the two eggs together and I'm gonna have to take two tablespoons of this mixture out. We're gonna use that as an egg wash later. One two put that aside and we're going to sift the flour and the salt into our mixing bowl i like to kind of mix the salt in as i uh, sift the flour so that i don't have to manually <laughs> mix it later and it isn't all in one spot We are, of course, sifting it to make sure there are no lumps left in the flour. And now we'll just do the rest. Okay, all done with that. I have melted the butter and I'm going to add that to the flour in my mixer that has a dough hook attached to it. Now it's time to add four tablespoons of the ginger syrup. One, two, three, and four. It smells so good. We're going to add the milk, sugar, and yeast mixture. I am grabbing a spatula just to make sure that I get all the yeast out of here. Turn on the mixer on slow to get this started. And then we're going to add the egg. Everything is in here right now. I just stopped it to scrape down some of the flour from the walls. You'll have to do that every so often, but for the rest, I'm gonna just let it go until this forms one smooth ball, and then I will see you back. The dough ball is pretty well formed, so what I'm going to do is take it out, rub a little bit of oil into the bowl, and then cover it with a damp towel so that it can rise for an hour. You don't need a lot of oil, just a little bit. I like to rub it around with a little piece of paper towel. Again, just to prevent the dough from sticking to the bowl. 
the bowl is oiled, I'm gonna put the ball of dough in there, put a damp tea towel over it, and put it in a warm spot to rise until it's doubled in size. The dough is still proofing, but it is almost done, so it's time to make the filling. What I'm going to do is actually measure it out over six equally sized portions so that I can make sure that every one of the loaves has the same amount of sugar filling. 300 grams of pearl sugar, my two teaspoons of cinnamon, which weigh five grams apparently. And I forgot to mention in the beginning of the recipe, I needed 30 extra grams of butter that is melted. So here is 30 grams of butter that we melted. And now we are going to mix that all through and make sure that the cinnamon covers all those pearls of sugar. The whole idea is that when you eat the bread, there is just these nice little chunks of sugar in there. This is 329 grams. So just for ease, let's take it, let's say it's 330. 330 divided by six is 55. I'm going to use these little ramekins. I'm tearing my scale and I'm gonna add exactly 55 grams of this mixture in here. 54. 55 grams is approximately three of these spoons worth. And the reason why I am dividing this into um, six containers or six equal portions is because it makes three loaves and you fold in the sugar twice. The dough is almost done proofing, so it's time to prepare our loaf pans. I like to make Suikerbrot in this paper loaf pan for a few reasons. The first reason is it reduces cleanup. I don't have to clean up a metal or glass loaf pan. The second reason is it makes for a great presentation. And when I make this, because it is a good amount of work, I like to make a double batch. So I'll end up with six of these and we often gift many of them to our friends. And this just looks a lot nicer. If you're using a regular loaf pan, you uh, will make two of them rather than three because a regular loaf pan is larger than these. And in that case, you have to divide the sugar cinnamon mixture into four equal portions instead of six. Also, if you're using a regular loaf pan, you will have to butter it before you move on to the next step that I'm gonna show you right now. One of the uh, characteristics of Suikerbrot is it has this ooey gooey bottom on the loaf and you get that by adding a little bit of sugar and ginger syrup in the bottom of the loaf pan. So I'm gonna take one tablespoon of sugar and just sprinkle it at the bottom of the loaf pan. And I repeat that for all of them. Now we have added a little bit of parchment paper to these paper loaf pans because there's actually holes in the bottom and the ginger syrup will start leaking out. Adding the uh, parchment paper, it doesn't completely prevent that from happening, but it definitely reduces it. If you like your Suikerbrot to have even more of an ooey gooey bottom, you add either more sugar or more ginger syrup. I like it gooey, so it would be two teaspoons of ginger syrup in the bottom, but I'm gonna do a full tablespoon. So that is one extra teaspoon of ginger syrup in the bottom of each. You don't have to coat the entire bottom. It will melt and touch the entire bottom of the dough in the oven. The dough is done proofing. And as you can see, it has approximately doubled in size. So what I'm going to do is punch it down a little bit, get some of that extra air out of it. And I have to divide it into three equal pieces. If you're using regular loaf pans, you would divide it into two equal pieces. I'm gonna do it by weighing it. This dough weighs 1,221. So that makes it 407 grams each. So I'm going to cut it into three, hopefully equal pieces. 405, that's pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it good enough. Pair this again, 400. Okay, that's a little, that's a little shy. We're gonna add a little bit more to that. That's good, and then this is the last one. Cover them to make sure they don't dry out, and I'll start rolling out the first one. Flour the board a little bit, and then I'm going to grab one of the pieces of dough and roll it out into a large rectangle. Roll it out, and it doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. I can guarantee you mine won't be, because it never is. This is good. You want it to be approximately two centimeters thick, and now what we're gonna do is I am going to add the first container with the sugar to it. Okay, 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold it into three pieces like this and then like that and just kind of push it out. And this is how you start getting a little bit more of a rectangle shape. And we're going to roll it out again. Okay. Just make sure that this dimension is approximately the length of your loaf pan. And I think I did a pretty good job. So now we're going to add the other half to it. And anything that falls off the dough is for you to eat. It's delicious. <laughs> so push this in a little bit to make sure that it sticks. And now I'm going to roll it up into a log and put it into the loaf pan. Just like that. And with the seam down, put it into your loaf pan. I'm gonna finish the other two. So I have made three even loaves and I'm now going to cover it with a damp towel and put it in a warm room to proof for another 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes and the loaves have finished proofing. As you can see, they have poofed up a little bit. Now I am preheating my oven to 375 degrees non-convection and I'm going to put a little egg wash on these and then sprinkle some sugar on it and I like to actually add some pearl sugar as well because clearly these loaves do not have enough sugar already. Brush egg wash on top. That's why we kept two tablespoons from the two eggs that we whisked together before making the dough. And now sprinkle some sugar on top. And then what I like to do is take some of these pieces of pearl sugar and just push them in at the top. It makes for a nice presentation. Do do do, do do do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The oven is done preheating, so I'm going to put them in for about 30 minutes. Start looking at it after about 15 minutes, depending on how your oven is. If it looks like one side is getting darker, uh, you can rotate the cookie sheet to make sure that they brown evenly. Somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes is probably when they're done. I'm gonna put it in the oven now. I took these out of the oven after approximately 25 minutes and let them completely cool. They look absolutely great. Time to uh, try a bite. The first slice is typically the most difficult one to cut out. Doesn't make it any less delicious though. As you can see, there's a little bit of the swirl. You see some of the cinnamon. Some of the bigger pieces of pearl sugar have been uh, dissolved and the other ones are uh, probably down uh, in the center a little bit more, still whole, so you get a nice crunch when you take a bite. It's smakelijk. Too big a bite. It's absolutely delicious. The bread is soft and fluffy. You have the taste of the cinnamon. I had a little bit of a crunch of one of those pieces of pearl sugar. It's very sweet because it is after all sugar bread or suikerbrood, but it is great. Now I typically eat this with a little bit of butter. So what I do is just take a little bit of butter and put it on top. And because it's so delicious, I'm gonna take another bite. Ginger, cinnamon, sugar, absolutely delicious. So how do we typically eat this in the Netherlands? One of two ways. We eat it with breakfast, because uh, after all, a Dutch breakfast is typically pretty sweet. Bread with all sorts of uh, chocolate or other sweet toppings. So this is not uncommon at breakfast. The other way is eat it almost like a slice of cake with coffee. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed eating and making this bread. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. If you have a question, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Third is that is how you get them in the baker. In the baker? In the baker. You get them in the baker.